Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drakewing Gaming. It's something to announce the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you in the Let's Play episode of Dawn Tide. I believe we are on Renzo's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. You too, Sal. We cross ways under the streetlight. As you brush past one another, he speaks. Five tomorrow by the harbor. Don't forget. A smile spreads to me, and I nod back. I won't. As suddenly as he appeared, Griff slips around the corner, his bushy white tail slinking after him. He's gone. It's dark, but it's warm. It's really warm. Oh, yeah, this let me drop this head off. Okay. <clears throat> Did you turn the heating off? Heating off the timer again? What? Climbing the stairs before me, South checks the thermostat in the kitchenette. A short tut punctuates, punctuates the click of a dial being turned on. It's been on all day, dude. Sorry, I rushed out this morning. Wasn't paying attention. I wander across the living room. To be fair, I should have clocked it. Just keep an eye on it next time. In the dark, Sal leans against the kitchen counter. She turns to me as I slump down onto the sofa. It was good to, f it was good to finally meet your ex? Yeah, that's him. I can see why you liked him. Handsome. I feel my ears fall flat behind me. I look down as I start to untie my boots. Sure is. Was it a bad thing to see him? You've been quiet all the way home. I tug at my heel and the boot comes loose. No, it's good to see him. It was just... I grunt, tugging the boot off and placing it on the floor. Unexpected. Sal moves a little closer. I don't look directly at her, instead untying the other boot. Alright, it's just that you seem to be doing better this evening until then. I said before, it's just a lot of pressure with people coming back and now there's another... I pull at the laces too fast. The friction burns at the skin under my fingers. Ah! I give my hand a shake and then press two and a half digits up to my mouth. Is this bringing them up? I continue to wrestle my foot from the other boot. It's fine. She stands across from me. There's an almost foreboding sense of understanding. Picking up both the boots in my left hand, I stand. Today was good. I've just got some things to think about. Okay. I, play, I pace to the door. Then I give in. Thanks for asking, Sal. I appreciate it. You're doing good, Ree. <laughs> good night, Sal. The air is still warm from the thermostat. The bed's like a toaster. Though cloudy, the feelings of today are alive in my chest. I remain restless after what should be what, sh what should have been a tiring day. Seeing everyone again was nice, but it doesn't feel real now. It all exists in this hazy world, just like the empty shop front window. It's as if it happened months ago, and I'm struggling to hold on to the details. Second, y'all. Hmm. A little bit stuffy today. The more I think about it, the more I realize how quickly this will pass. Ranzo will set off. Billy will finish uni and stay up north. And Griff? will disappear. I can't blame them. I bet that Joe and Sal are looking for ways out, too. They looked, they've looked after me enough. I know Billy still talks to Eliza. Probably talks shit about you. You should have left them. You should have left when you could. You know how to manage this eventuality. Starlight bleaches the thin curtains and picks out the edges of things laying still. An open bag on my desk. Today's clothes draped over a chair's backrest. 1 a.m. My boots waiting by the door. Do you know how to manage now? Pushing the sheets off of me, I turn to sit upright. I take my clothes from the backrest. Sitting on the edge of my bed, fully clothed, an uncanny feeling still bubbling in my chest. It's time for a walk. Ooh. That's pretty. Man, I love the music for this game. The walk up to the cliffs has made has made my has made my breath heavy. The few lights of the town behind me are all that confirm I'm not in the wilderness. Though my legs are tired, I'm still restless. Reminds me of going up the hill to Ranzo's place when we were kids. My eyes scan the heathers. Hackle hackles ripple through them in the wind. Their sharp prickles look soft as, soft as moss. Down below, I see Kelly's rock, sitting just out, front, just out from the cove. 
Its wave-battered edge faces the northern horizon, the old wreck post atop it, a worn white nail in the dark, dark sea. The thought of going down there now, now that he's back, feels strange. It's not like he came here to meet him. Not last night, either. My heel grinds in the dirt. I keep walking. At the crest of the hill is a worn-down lay-by. Lay-by? That's where the hell that is. It's a good spot for hikers to park to get a view of the cove. Oh, okay, I guess I answered it. It's near where he used to live. No cars pass at this time of night. In the silence, a worn-out red sedan... <sighs> Stop yawning! Fuck! In the silence, a worn-out red sedan lurks just off the road. Its lights off. A figure stands beside it, limp to one side, a knowing anticipation. His muzzle is long and pointed, his eyes shattered by the peak of a flat cap. He's thin as a branch, clothes hang across him like half-drawn sails. Oh. Hello, new character. Another late one, Firecracker. Hey, Graham. I cross the potholed ground, meeting him at the bumper. I stand with my hands in my pockets. His smile is kind, wrinkles at the seams as he speaks. Trouble sleeping again? His eyes are visible now beneath the cap, glinting and deep set. Sorry to call you, call you up this late. Beauty sleep doesn't do me much good these days. A young man like you should get it while he can. He surveys the length of the empty road, and stretches until its edges are swallowed by the dark. You got your steps in, then. Ready to head back. With half a smile, I nod. He tips his slender snout towards the car. Keeping my eyes on his, I pace along my side of the vehicle. I open the back door and lower myself to the seat. He edges along the hedge on his side. I close the door behind me. It's echoed by Graham's entrance to the other side. The silence of the countryside is further muffled. The engine and lights stay off. Cotton trousers brush against aged upholstery. No wrinkle of fabric goes unannounced. The air is still here, dusty, pierced by lingering sweetness. Small punctuated breaths, my legs shift on the seat to settle on a well-worn patch. Graham's posture loosens. A quiet hiss from his side of the car. A breath is held, then... White veins of smoke crawl across his silhouette. The smell of dust is slowly smothered. Fingers spread across my thigh. Mine trace through them in return. Oh, my! They find their way between his shirt and his stomach. There's no force as he presses at the back of my spine, but I pull towards him as if there was... as if there was. I feel each one of his ribs beneath my short, coarse hairs. My lips pressed against his. Move as he speaks. That's it. The taste on his tongue is sweet and thin. It spreads to the back of my mouth like burnt sugar. The hand on my thigh tenses, croaches. I feel the sharp canines on the tip of my tongue. The sound escapes my shallow throat. My hand dips under his waistband. Elastic, under fabric, over my wrist, edging down his each thigh. Lips drag over navel. I feel each breath shudder up through me as I reach what we're both searching for. I already know what he's going to say. Good. Good boy. Huh. Weather today is a little less brisk. Despite my lack of sleep, there's a bit of invigoration in me. It's early, but the dockyard work is still in full swing. It isn't long before a familiar face appears. I say familiar, but I'm still getting used to the wilder scruff. What's on, rye bread? Hey, Rance. You still in uniform? He pulls down the buckle of his overalls. Easier to get on and off the ship that way. Huh. That all your stuff? I nodded the rucksack over his shoulder. A pair of smart brogues. Smart brogues? A swing from his hand as we walk toward the hill. What kind of voice should I do for Rance? I don't think it should be that deep. Nah, I left some things back in the cabin. I'll be going back there a fair bit. <sighs> Turning through some stooped trees, the sound of the docks grow distant. So you're not staying at your mum's? Oh, I will be. Uh, mostly, I think. It might be a bit funny this time around, though. How come? Well, you know. Right. It could be a number of things. It's been long enough, though. You'll be alright. Long enough. Your grandmother, right? And being home without her around? I met the memorial. For Dad. Shit, you fucked it! Oh shit, I'm sorry. It's okay. But yeah, Mom says it's about time we got it done. This is the kind of thing no response will appropriately cover. Damn. Yeah, damn. His melancholy sours. His eyes averted. Then I'll tell you about it. Did I drop that on you just now? 
And to be honest, I don't remember. Work's been a bit... It's fine. But hey, it's okay. I'm here either way. I lean in and squeeze him from the side. I lean in and squeeze him from the side. Always around if you want to talk about it. That picks him up. You too, rye bread. The sun speckles through the trees. His little gold earrings glint with his, with his eyes. Gone full hello sailor since you've been gone, haven't you? His eyes flick to mine. He spots where I'm looking. Oh, the earring! A smirk warms my cheeks. And more than that, I think you're keeping your cabin free for a reason. What do you mean? Come on, I saw the app on your phone yesterday. Ha! <laughs> well, you know how it is. But that thing is pinging off like a band when you get to port. Come off it. Hey, I get a few. How many you shagged at the last stop, then? At the last one? Two, I think. I was hoping for more. Any good? Yup. Hmm, not getting much out of him. You go around the docks with a handkerchief hanging out of your back pocket? No. But if I did, what color would you think it'd be? <sighs> Navy blue. Navy blue. He scoffs knowingly. As sometimes. I said red. Red. Ha! That'll be the day. What is it? Yeah, you've got them big coarse working hands. What does this mean? What does this mean? I'm not sure what this means. Yellow. No! Life on the water hasn't made you keen on the sport, then? Ha! Piss off! Not on? Look, if that's your thing, I'm not judging, but... I feel a little bit evil poking him like this. He's a sweet boy, so hearing about his seedier exploits is something of a novelty. His embarrassment soon lapses into a wistful sigh. What? Nothing. I've just missed this. Let's see. Let's keep going with the red one and see. Heh. <laughs> okay. Oh, navy blue. Alright. What side, though? I, uh, I'm a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Can someone in the comments please tell me what this means? I'd love to know what this is, what, the, what, they're, what they're joking about. I don't, I don't quite get it. Let's see, yeah. Ugh, alright. What? Nothing. I've just missed this. There must be others in the crew. There are, and they ain't shy about talking to, talking about it neither. It's just different with you. Old times and all that. His smile is as bright as the sun peeking over the treetops. I can't help but beam back in return. At the end of a keyhole cul-de-sac, a house stands overlooking the bay. Tall sunflowers bow their heads towards us. The leaves of one brush against my shoulders we pass through the gate. Never liked these. The way they look at you. Oof. You okay, man? Just tired from the climb. You sure? It's not... Before he can talk, the door opens. Standing in the doorway is a short, broad figure with curly, whitish fur. Aww. Oh, hello, Danny. Ranzo is quickly dragged into a tight hug. Owen's voice is coated in a thick, warm accent. She's extremely glad to see him. Hello, Mom. He hugs back, and they, say, and they sway slightly in the doorframe. His mom steps back and looks him up and down. You've lost weight, Abby, you have. You're looking very slim. Ha! <laughs> Thanks, Mom. It's so good to see you, and Riley, too. Morning, Mrs. Levant. Oh, don't you dare do all the formalities with me, Riley. It's Agnes to you. Of course. Didn't hurt to have the reminder. You boys get inside. I've got tea and biscuits in the living room. Told you. I sit across from Ranzo. Uh, mm. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate the support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Armor. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our not safe work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!